cut to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide Buddy, he's your peptide buddy. Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about the hugely misleading, unverified peptides of Amazon, and although I take the YouTube medical disclaimer seriously, and would not endorse a peptide supplier as this is an educational and an informative channel, I can in good faith and on special occasion tell you where not to buy your peptides, and that would be Amazon.com. Oh snap! So as a preventative measure here, I'm not going to hone in or name any specific suppliers, but you'll see why that doesn't really matter in the end, because the message stays the same. Let's start out with faux BPC-157. In the third-party Amazon supplier world known as BPC-159. And it's something that apparently people unfortunately buy. And I don't think it's all their fault. I think people, especially those of increasing age, are unfortunately more susceptible to scams. And when these peptides are growing in social popularity, I'd guess the biggest of which is BPC-157, people understandably fall victim to the marketing ploys that allow these companies to prey on others, including not just elderly folks and people who might be misinformed, but also people who get BPC-157 conflated with the claims that it's the same thing essentially as BPC-159. And so let's consider this video less of a call out and more of a microcosm of the deception that interplays strongly within the peptide space, as I'll hopefully help you navigate these scams. And so I'll spare company names here, but anybody could quickly find everything I'm referencing. And don't worry, reliable photos will be included. So, BPC-157 is a growingly popular pentadeca peptide derived from human gastric acid. BPC-159 is not. It's literally not a thing, and when you look for any semblance of data, peer-reviewed or otherwise, you will see that it does not exist. Let's look at one product here. This advertisement present on Amazon lists that BPC-159 has an additional 35% muscle healing compared to placebo and plus 38% tissue restoration compared to placebo too. Wow. Okay, so two things we notice right away. One, what the heck does muscle healing and tissue restoration mean in the context of BPC-159? Two, let's imagine these findings are somehow true and legitimate. The distribution on the graph is significantly exaggerated. Values of an additional 35 and 38% would be about one third more effective than placebo. And thus this picture would look more like this with the findings shown in red. See, we haven't even investigated the claims yet and the advertising is already significantly hyperbolic. Now let's look at the PubMed ID that's attached to this quoted study. A PubMed ID is a unique identifier that can be used to find a particular research article. And so if someone's citing a source, you could copy paste the ID and go straight to your reference of choice. But in this case, the cited reference takes you to a literature review on BPC-157 with no mention of alternatively structured compounds and no hint at something that could even be remotely considered BPC-159. Now, let's think about the way peptides such as BPC-157 interact within the body. Their activity is strongly structurally dependent, right? We've acknowledged our research on BPC-157 is limited, and we've only just begun to scratch the surface of our understanding into how the compound interacts within different physiologic pathways such as VEGF and JAK2, both of which we investigated in our recent videos over the past few weeks and in our full comprehensive guide on BPC-157 that's newly available. In these peptides, the amino acid sequences themselves and the bonds between these amino acids modulate the shape and the action of the compound, which describes a level of intricacy and specificity that is present in BPC-157, but which is not in BPC-159. BPC-159 is a literal blended concoction of amino acids, which in no way factually could work the same way as BPC-157 or represent the compound in any way other than the name. And so calling it a BPC-157 alternative is not only exaggerative, but it's also dishonest and deceiving. It's like giving someone a compound with a similar amino acids to Samorolin in a completely different order with a completely different 3D structure with no evidence of how it works in the body and calling it, let's say, 
Dumbledorellin, labeling it as a growth hormone secretagog alternative. And you'll see all the positive reviews, which are ridiculous, but for the most part, upon clicking on the reviews of these listers, you'll see many are serial reviewers or have some sort of incentive for talking about this worthless product. And then there are genuine reviews. I'll post some of them here. Now, when you look up the company that put together this half-decent advertisement, you'll see a Facebook page with 40 followers, a terrible logo, and a website that doesn't exist. Point being, do your own research, please. These peptides are experimental and non-prescribed as is hence why I share the research-derived risks and benefits rather than take these affiliate deals and say where to buy them. Because for the most part, we're trying to decipher legitimacy in a world where, unfortunately, the opposite is standard. And despite the FDA's ban on compounding, which was essentially a parking ticket that doesn't need to be paid, there are no consequences for inadequate production, or in this case, pure deception. Stay away from the Amazon peptide marketplace. Some things aren't worth it. Thank you for watching, and have a great day. Peptide Buddy out. Cut to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide Buddy, he's your Peptide Buddy.